All right, this is the addendum to uh, the 16.5 uh, video where we calculate a surface area, except now, uh, in, in that video, I really only parameterized some, uh, some surfaces using uh, cylindrical coordinates. There we go. And in this video, then, uh, we're going to parameterize some surfaces or just one surface using spherical coordinates. So uh, to, to help you guys understand then uh, the difference between the two, I guess. Um, or not the difference, but like how to do both. So let's look at 16.58, where we, we're only asked to parameterize the uh, surface, that is the upper portion um, of the sphere, uh, x squared um, plus y squared plus z squared. So uh, upper portion cut from the sphere, um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 8, uh, by the plane uh, z is equal to negative 2. So again, uh, what we have then in a really, 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 really rudimentary sketch um, is we're going to have some sphere uh, centered uh, along the origin, okay? And then uh, I'm going to have a plane that cuts it, all right? And then so what happens then is now, uh, right, now I got like uh, the cap, and I only care about uh, the sphere part, all right? So essentially what happens is when you're cut by something, uh, the by part leaves a hole. So this red outline here, think of that as like, this. think of this as an upside down bowl with no lid, okay? So when you're cut by something, uh, it, it, it literally, you have a hollow sphere and you slice it um, at that plane. And then so now what you have is now you have a, a bowl, right? And now you have no lid on it. And then the surface area is going to just be the round part of the bowl, right? It's just going to be this round part of that bowl. So, okay. Um, and then this red line is going to be, I guess, z equals 2, whatever. So how, uh, how, wow, okay, z equals negative 2. So um, I did that. Oh, so that would have been z equals 2. But if a zero's, z equals negative 2, then we get sliced down here. Right, and think of the same way, but instead of just having uh, that upper portion, you're gonna have this entire guy right here. Okay, so you're gonna have most of it, um, but it's hollow, right? It's hollow, so we only care about the surface on the outside, and then right here, again, there's gonna be no lid. So this is z is equal to negative two. Okay. So good thing I caught that. So now we need to parameterize uh, using spherical coordinates. And if you remember what spherical coordinates are, and um, they were x is equal to uh, rho, oh boy, uh, rho sine phi cosine theta, uh, y is equal to rho sine phi sine theta, and z is equal to rho cosine phi. And I really, really hope I have that right. Uh, looks like I do. Um, but anywho, uh, we we do we do we really want uh this and yeah okay yeah of course um so so we so this is going to be our sphere right uh, this is going to be how we parameterize our sphere but notice that uh we know what rho is we know what the radius is because remember i'm on the sphere i'm on the surface of the sphere that's all i care about is the surface area so anytime i'm on the surface of the sphere like if i'm here then i'm going to be the same distance to the origin as if I were on another part of the surface, like over here in purple, right? The distance to the origin, because I'm on the surface, is always going to be the same no matter where I am. So that means that I know what rho is, and in fact, rho is just going to be the square root of 8, right? Because this tells me the radius of the, circle, uh, of the sphere. So in our case, then, we have s, not of rho, and uh, phi and theta, but just phi and theta, okay? So when you parameterize in spherical coordinates, you only have phi and theta because again, you know what rho is because you're on the surface of the sphere. And now, what is that? Well, in my case then, this is going to be, uh, uh, rho is two root two, right? Sine phi, cosine theta. Uh, so that's the x coordinate, just hopping in the x spot and then, uh, now you got the y guy hopping in the y spot. So now you get uh, 2 root 2 sine phi sine theta. And then you get the z guy hopping in the z spot. So it's, 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 it, it doesn't seem that bad uh, as of right now, right? Uh, 2 root 2 uh, cosine phi. OK. And uh, now what? So, uh, so that, that's the z guy. 
and then uh, now we got to figure out the bounds, right? And if you notice, just from this uh, drawing here, even though it's really shitty, um, when I cut through the plane, and it's because I'm cutting through the entire sphere, right? Uh, there's, uh, I, I'm left with an open lid that, that it's a, that's a full circle, right? My, my, my lid is a full circle. So that means I know what my theta bounds are going to be. Theta is going to be from uh, zero to two pi. And again, look where theta occurs. Theta only pops up here, right? And it pops up in the Y coordinate. And since I don't have another equation up here that says, oh, X, it has to be uh, X equals zero is cutting it or y equals zero is cutting it. Um, since that, since those two guys don't exist, or uh, you know, y equals one isn't cutting it. You know, you, you get what I mean, right? Um, I don't have any restrictions on what theta uh, can be because I have no restrictions on x and y. Okay, I only have a restriction on z, and this is going to play a big deal uh, when we get to the phi uh, parameterization, which is exactly where we are now. So now I've got to figure out what phi is going to be from. All right. I remember uh, the default uh, then for uh, uh, for uh, phi in spherical coordinates when we have the whole sphere was between zero and pi. But uh, obviously we don't have the whole sphere, so uh, we can't just say that's the case. So what do we do now? Essentially, we take a look at this picture, right? This really crappy drawing I have right now, and. Let's try it like this. Let's try it. Let's, we're going to collapse it in two dimensions. So what's going to happen then is I'm going to choose the z-axis, all right? And over here, I'm going to choose the x or y-axis. It literally doesn't matter because I'm viewing this um, as a two-dimensional cross-section, okay, um, of the sphere. And so no matter where I cut it uh, in, this, in, in this picture, then it's always going to look like the following. I'm going to have uh, a sphere, right? z here is going to be 2 root 2, here it's going to be 2 root 2 for both x and z, and then I'm going to get down here, and then I'm going to be cut by a line, z is equal to negative 2, right? And let's make this the y-axis because it, it might be a little easier to explain this next part. Now I need to figure out what phi is going to be, right? I need to figure out what phi is going to be from, and do you guys remember what the angle of phi was? The angle of phi is this angle right here, right? So up here is zero and down here is pi, okay? So phi then would be able to go from zero all the way over to this guy right here, to this line. This line at z is equal to negative two, right? And what happens at z is equal to negative two? Well, at z equals negative 2, I got neg z is equal to negative 2, but what, was, but what is my z parameterization? My z parameterization is z is equal to 2 root 2 cosine phi, right? That literally comes from this z parameterization right here. So z gets stopped at negative 2, and z is also equal to this parameterization. So what that means is then phi is going to get stopped, right? at whatever angle this is right there. And so we have to find the maximum bound of, the, we, we want to find what this angle is right here um, because this gives us our upper bound and it looks clearly like our lower bound um, on phi is going to be zero because we start from the z axis here, right? So again, I just drew the sphere, collapsed down in a two dimensional version. Um, you can kind of see that here, right? You can kind of see that. So. Even though I say it's a shitty picture, it, it's okay. It, it will do the job. Um, so the lower bound is going to be zero. And then now we need to find uh, this angle that I have drawn out um, for phi. And to do that, we need to solve this system of equations, which is really easy because you just set them equal to each other. So you got negative two is equal to two root two cosine phi. All right. And now uh, what do you get? Divide both sides by two root two. Um, you get negative one over root two is equal to cosine phi. So this is actually negative root two over two is equal to cosine phi. And what is that? What is that angle? Well, uh, it can either be three pi over four or five pi over four, right? But, but five pi over four is bigger than pi. And we agreed that the, 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 the phi angle 
uh, must be less than pi, right? So you can't choose 5 pi over 4, it's too big. And so look, phi is going to be 3 pi over 4. All right, so that's how you find um, the angles, uh, or, and that's how you parameterize the surface um, using, uh, using spherical coordinates. And, you know, there's going to be other wacky cases that happen where then you get cut by two planes, right? So let's say I got cut by a plane up here that was z is equal to positive 2 and z was equal to negative 2. Then my surface would, uh, then the part I only care about then uh, would be uh, this guy, right, right here these two blue lines would all be all I care about. And then my phi angle can't start from zero anymore, but it has to start from whatever angle this is, right, at z equals two. And if you, and if this were the hypothetical surface, again, this isn't the real surface for this picture, but if this were the hypothetical, hypothetical surf, surface, um, you get pi over four um, and then to three pi over four, right? So that's if this were cut by, um, whoa, if this were cut by two planes instead of just the one plane on the bottom. But anywho, uh, that's not what's going on in this picture. Let's see if I can restore it to what we actually want the picture to be. Da, 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 da. I'm just clicking the undo button a billion times. Wow, uh, can't even restore it to what I want it to be. Uh, okay, anyways, uh, I can redraw it now. That's fine. All right, cool. So yeah, so that's it. Uh, and then, you know, when you have to find D sigma, um, remember, you need to find now s with respect to phi um, and s with respect to theta, which isn't bad at all. Uh, so let's actually do that for this problem. Uh, let me see how long this has been. Uh, 11 minutes, doesn't matter. It's an addendum video. Um, we can try to find that surface area, but I'm not going to go out and do that integral. Uh, but we'll, we'll set it up. And so, uh, right, the derivative of this, so this becomes 2 root 2 cosine phi uh, cosine theta. All right, and then you get two root two cosine phi sine theta, and then you get negative two root two sine phi. Right, and then over here you take the derivative with respect to theta, and you get two root two negative two root two sine phi uh, sine theta, uh, two root two sine phi cosine theta, and then uh, zero. Right, because z guy doesn't have a uh, doesn't have a theta in it. All right, and then you got to cross them. Um, <laughs> oh boy, that's an I. Okay, and uh, well, I'm just gonna look at it, but you guys can set it up um, and do the cross. Uh, so you get negative, you get, you get eight sine squared, cos, uh, sine squared phi cosine theta. Um, and then you get And then you get eight sine squared phi sine sine theta, and then you get do, 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 you get cosine squared theta there, and you get sine squared theta um, there. So so you got eight, and then uh, you get eight, and then you get plus eight. So you get sixteen uh, sixteen cos phi sine phi, right? And then, oh boy, calculating the uh, the magnitude of this guy. Um, uh, what is that? You get root 64 sine fourth phi cosine squared theta plus 64 sine fourth phi uh, sine squared theta. And then uh, here you get 256 uh, cos squared or plus 256 cos squared phi, sine squared phi. And uh, that means you get root, uh, here you can factor out a 64 sine to the fourth, that should be a phi. And, the, and then you're left with uh, cosine squared, sine squared, which add up to be one. So you get 64 sine fourth phi plus 256 cos squared phi, sine squared phi. And uh, factor out a sine squared phi, you get sine squared phi, or you get 64 sine squared phi times, and then this guy becomes sine squared phi. Sine squared phi um, plus 4 cos squared phi. Oh, man. Man. 
That's disappointing. That's really disappointing. Um, do, 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 do. Why is this so disappointing? I thought I was able to get, I thought this was able to be cancel out um, and get one. Eight minus a negative eight. That's that's sixteen. Uh huh 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 huh. Eight plus eight. That's how you get those guys cancel out, and then everything else. Everything else is ah. Uh, you know what? Close enough. I think this is right. Um. Uh, it looks like a pain in the ass to integrate. So, anyhow, uh, that's what you. That's what I think you get. Um. Bummer that this doesn't simplify. Uh, I wish it did, but anyhow, uh, the the main part. I'm I'm doing this bottom part on the fly, and there's no answer key for me to compare this to, so uh, yikes. But um, uh, yeah, so so the the important part then was just doing this, uh, be able to get these parameters up here, um, right here. That was that was the important part, and understanding why. Uh, the the parameterization of spherical coordinates is like this way. So this up here is 100% correct. Um, that, that's how I parameterize the sphere and, uh, or the surface area using spherical coordinates. And hopefully this video was uh, useful. Um, I might, I'll, since I post these notes online, I'm gonna complete these notes um, down here and see uh, if this is the actual parameterization, uh, the actual uh, SV cross S theta and uh, it'll be uploaded. But in the video, we're just gonna leave it like this. So I'll see you guys next video. Um, and hopefully this again was uh, useful.